Ooh. Hey, hi, how you doing? How's it going? So I've been having some conversations recently about the current state of DEI. Um, you've, if you're watching this video, you're likely interested in DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And you've probably seen some of the articles that have been going around, some of the conversations that have been had on social media. People are saying DEI is dying. It's the end of DEI in corporate America. It's failed. Da, 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 da. I am going to be touching on five things that I saw last year that I, they're just not it. <laughs> and um, I'm not going to just be ranting, but I'm also going to be posing some potential solutions to these problems, some actions that we can take, because at the end of the day, what good is it to just sit around and complain and walk in circles about it right you're gonna see me kind of looking off in this video because i have some notes and i don't want to miss anything today i want to make sure that i cover all of my points because i got a lot to say in a very short amount of time so let's get into it so number one is that um, DEI practitioners got to get it together. And one of my partners in this space, Dr. Sam Ray said it best. She said, quote unquote, all DEI folks, we need to tighten up period. Um, I'll link to her, uh, LinkedIn post where she talks about this. She better explains it than I can, but I just want to hit on a couple points here. Number one. And when I say a couple, there are actually three things that fall into this first point about DEI practitioners needing to tighten up. So number one is experience and credibility. Um, you know, over the past couple of years, the DEI space has exploded. Companies are spending like $8 billion on trainings. Anywho, um, so I say that to say that the industry has taken off and with that has come a lot of inexperienced folks. And I've said it time and time again, and it's a hill that I am willing to die on, but Obtaining a DEI certificate or certification is not enough to make you a really great DEI practitioner and it does not enough to give you experience. It can, of course, introduce you to some of the theory, the frameworks, the strategy, etc. But there is just practicality that does not come with obtaining a certification. And it also should be said that just because you belong to a historically systemically marginalized a group or identity that does not make you a DEI expert as well. So I say all this to say DEI isn't a trend. There have been a lot of uh, DEI influencers, DEI experts, self-proclaimed now. There are a lot of folks that have just jumped in without a lot of experience. And one of the problems is that if you have created this sort of influencer persona, people are naturally going to be attracted to you and want to work with you, right? But then you get into this space, this working environment, and you're expected to make all of these changes and you can't deliver. And that is a problem because it causes DEI, the, the DEI space as a collective and as well as DEI practitioners to lose credibility. And there's also a loss of trust as well, right? And it's harmful and it's most harmful to people that belong to those historically systemically marginalized groups. So. That's my first call out as it relates to DEI practitioners needing to tighten it up. Number two, and this one's real, real important. I have noticed that there are so many DEI practitioners, professionals that are not checking their own biases. And I don't mean just being aware of, let's say I have a bias towards, um, people that wear glasses. I think that people that wear glasses are inherently evil, just giving a random example. But it's not just acknowledging that, but also trying to solve for it. Like, how do I change this behavior and this belief that I possess? People are not doing that work. How are you working in the DEI space and not checking your own biases? And yet you're telling other people to do it. That's not how this works. That's not gonna get us very far. And related to that is that it is very clear and apparent that a lot of folks that are working in the DEI space only spend time and energy around people that are like them. And in 2023 on this here, Beyonce's internet, where literally culture is at your fingertips. It's at your fingertips. You, it's here, it's here. There's no excuse. There's no excuse to lack cultural competency. 
or competence, whichever you choose to say. There's no excuse, especially as a DEI practitioner. You should constantly be surrounding yourselves, you know, in different environments around different types of people, um, you know, reading different types of material, watching different content, listening to things, whatever it is that you do typically, however you, you absorb, uh, you know, culture and experience life do that. Like if you know that you enjoy, uh, drawing, take, you know, go have go take a drawing class with someone who doesn't look like you. Or, uh, if you enjoy music, experience different types of music or whatever it may be. If you enjoy food, experience different types of cuisine. And while you're at it, ask questions about the culture. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. And it's just really frustrating to see people working in this space that, don't take the time to understand the many layers of oppression that exist and that don't take the time to understand social identity and that don't take the time to understand the concepts of privilege and power and taking the time to acknowledge the privilege and power that they as individuals, not just as a DEI practitioner, but as an individual have. Um, and again, this is doing more harm than good. The last thing that I want to touch on in terms of DEI practitioners, and this is less so about actions and behaviors of a DEI practitioner, but there is a significant lack of diversity when it comes to DEI practitioners that are actually getting into the door and that are able to do the work in this space. Um, you could go on LinkedIn, for example, or even other social media platforms and look up folks with DEI backgrounds, titles, and you'll notice like they may be DEI influencers, but as far as getting in the door and doing some work, um, the diversity is very, very slim. Just this past November, there was an article from Fast Company and they were talking about the state of CDOs, which is uh, chief diversity officer. And one of the things that they shared and I'll quote here is that the most common ethnicity among CDOs is white accounting for 81.3% of all who hold the title. So, and the other, and there's one other thing I'll just touch on here that they called out, which was that in 2021, the average tenure for CDOs was 1.8 years, one third of the tenure of other C-suite executives. That is quite telling. Um, and you can also take a look at the number or the diversity amongst um, C-suite executives across Fortune 100 companies, 500 companies, and it, it, the numbers are real low. I don't have it right in front of me, but they're real, real low. And this data is probably a year or two old, but I can guarantee you not much has changed, right? And so again, this is an issue. Um, and knowing that DEI is an extension of affirmative action, and you could go argue with somebody else, get somebody else to do it about this. This is a fact. DEI is an extension of affirmative action. And, and I'm talking us centric right now, obviously, but it was an extension or is an extension of affirmative action and affirmative action started as a means to tackle racial discrimination in the U S contrary to the popular belief. It started with racial as a means to tackle racial discrimination. And then later, um, people started using or leveraging affirmative action to tackle gender discrimination as well but it did not start as a means to tackle gender discrimination. So it's quite unfortunate that there is such a lack of diversity, especially ethnic and racial diversity uh, when it comes to roles such as CDO um, because, well, you get my point. Anyways, that was point number one, which was quite long winded, but that was, that was all encompassing. Um, so I say all that to say that we need people that are coming in to do this work who are first doing the work with themselves, who are also um, educating themselves, not only on the sort of theory of DEI, but getting practical experience. Like my best experiences as a DEI practitioner have come with me working alongside people that had many, many years of experience who have seen the many evolutions of the DEI space. Um, and so that is very important and critical. And then on the other side of that is that we need to ensure that we are hiring diverse people, not only into chief diversity officer roles, but into other DEI roles internally. 
Um, and I know that there are a number of people in the DEI space who are tired, who are burnt out, who are quitting, who are going to start their own thing, but these companies aren't going anywhere. So for those of you that are still holding it down internally, I commend you. We need you there. Keep, keep chugging along. Um, if I can support, give me a shout. Like we need people in there that are really doing the work and that are holding it down. All right. So my second point, the thing, and again, I'm, I'm kind of highlighting through, um, I'm kind of highlighting through problems that were recurring last year, um, and solutions and ideas for what would lead to a better outcome in the DEI space for 2023. So point number two, it is time out for this low hanging fruit stuff. And what I mean by that is that it's time out for things like, let's raise awareness, let's do cultural heritage months, let's celebrate this, let's do this, you know, standardized unconscious bias training. We've seen it time and time and time again. And again, it's only doing more harm than good and only discrediting the possibilities of what DEI work can actually do. Now, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any awareness in workplaces. I'm not saying that we should do away with um, cultural celebrations, acknowledgements, holidays, etc. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that it's time that we commit to a much longer journey and that we invest in a much longer journey. Um, we didn't just get here to the set of problems that we see within the DEI space overnight. So it's gonna take some time to really um, unpack and dismantle some of these systems, these oppressive systems that are in place that have uh, allowed us to maintain homogenous workplaces that have uh, promoted inequity, that have you know made people feel like they shouldn't be in a place that you name it right and so it's going to take time and um you know it it it's time out like i said for the 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 quick and easy the low hanging grabbing fruit so this year i would love to see people investing more time and energy into longer term strategies and not just these they're not even short term strategies they're just like quick little quick hits i like to call them quick hits low hanging fruit, as I said before. So that leads me to my third point, which is that it is also time to do away with these cookie cutter initiatives, right? There is no one size fits all approach to DEI, which is quite frankly tied to the very first thing that I talked about in terms of DEI practitioners, you know, not really having experience, not knowing how to go about doing this work, not having accountability, all those things that I hinted at. Um, and the sheer fact is that that doesn't exist. There's no real structure. Unlike a lot of industries where there are clear pathways for how you go about doing things and how you become, um, a, you know, subject matter expert, if you will, the DEI space really does lack that. And so what I've seen is that a lot of DEI practitioners are taking on sort of these one size fits all approaches, especially in the consulting space. You see people sort of come in, you see people sort of come in with their mold and they're like, do this. And then they jump over to the next company, do this. And then do, and it's just like, doop, 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 right? So again, it's sort of like this quick hit. I come in, I do something because, you know, I roll out a training. At least I did something DEI related and people can stop asking about it, right? But that's not solving our problems. Again, more harm than good. Um, Look, it, it takes time, it takes a lot of time to listen, to gather data, to gather insights, to in turn make a, a, a truly informed decision. Um, and that's what is needed in the DEI space, right? Too often folks are like, well, let's go and see what our counterparts did over at insert company and let's do that. It doesn't, it does not work. It does not work. You literally, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You need to do a thorough assessment of your current state of things. You need to ask people questions. You need to understand what is going on. You need to understand how people are being affected by the current systems and structures and processes and procedures that are in place. Um, and only then can you choose uh, a, a possible solution or direction and know that the first, maybe even the second or third um, option that you try, it might not work, right? Again, we didn't get here overnight, so it takes time. Um, but 
when you go in and just throw something at a problem or don't even acknowledge or know the problem, just decide to do something, um, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of energy. And then again, you're losing credibility and people are like, oh, this DEI stuff is pointless. We're and that, and that is, that is what is happening. And it gives people, it validates what people are already trying to do, which is take away budget and resources from DEI work. People already are on edge. And when I say people, leaders are already on edge. The folks with the money already are stay on standby. Like, did they mess it up yet? Did, did they mess it up yet? Oh, snatch it. Yaga. <laughs> like, but seriously, like that people are on standby waiting for you to slip. They're waiting for us to slip up. So it's like, you got to come in and do it and do it right. And it's not just for them, but most importantly is for the historically marginalized individuals that are in that space. And likely one of few, if not only we at the end of the day should be aiming to be, do our best work for them to create a better space for them to thrive and 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 to to pave the way for others and to be more innovative in all these things right so in 2023 slow it down take some time assess things gather data make an informed decision and when i say data i'm not just talking about quantitative data uh, like demographic data about people that's tied to diversity. I'm talking also about, I'm talking mostly about the qualitative side of things. How are people feeling? What are people's perceptions? Um, and, you know, you know, actually looking at trends. If I notice that a particular group or set of people are constantly getting ahead while this set of people with the same, same job family, the same level experience, um, et cetera, are just kind of leveling out, that's something I need to look into, right? Um, and so this is this is the year that I really, I want to see so much more of that. Will we see more of it? I don't know, but that is what is needed. Um, if you don't know or understand what I'm talking about, find someone to help, you know? Like, we're out here, we are here, we are here. And it's funny because I was on a call recently with, um, I was on a call this week with a client and they were like, Oh, we're so happy you're still working with us. We thought by now you would go work full time. I bet you have so many offers. Now let me bring that uh, 80, what was it? 81.3% of CDOs are white people. No, I don't have a ton of offers because when I come, if I were to go into any organization as a CDO, I want to get some things done and I'm either gonna get fired or quit because I know that I'll get a lot of pushback. Um, but the offers are not there like people think it is. But anyways, I digress. So point number four, how much time am I in? Ooh, 20 minutes. All right, so point number four, this year, I'm gonna need y'all to stop diversity hiring. It is time, just hire people, just hire people, just hire people, but I'm gonna need you to be mindful that you should not just be hiring people into your homogenous workplace that you've made no attempt to adjust the equity and inclusion situation within. You can't just hire a bunch of different people, a wide mix of people and expect them to come into a workplace that was designed and built by a, a specific group of folks and maintain for that specific group of folks. And you bring these people in and just expect them to just thrive and be great and love it and be all cheery and, oh, I'm so happy to be here. That's, it's time out for that too. That's not, that's not, that's not gonna fly anymore. Um, so often people hear DEI work or DEI strategy and automatically they think about recruiting and hiring and sourcing. And we often say you have to clean in house before you start trying to, you know, go look outside and help others. And it's true, you know, and you know, of course you can tag team, you can hire a diverse mix of people and bring them in while also working to make your workspace more equitable and inclusive. But Few people are doing that. Few organizations are doing that. And then there's this idea that, um, and I, I laugh because I can't believe I'm still saying this, but there's this idea that the pipeline is the problem and it's not. 
I can't tell you how many conversations I've had and I'm speaking specifically to organizations who are like, oh, we'd love to hire more black employees because we recognize that is um, that we don't have many and we need more representation and we need more of their insight to contribute to our organization. Of course you do. Of course, of course, of course. But then they're like, the pipeline's the problem. You know, we're looking for this specific person and this set of skills and this and this and this. The pipeline is not the problem. I, and I'm gonna speak specifically to tech right now. I am in a number of tech organizations, groups, collectives for black people specifically. And when I tell you there are thousands, thousands of current and aspiring technical folks that are good at what they do. And maybe they don't know the exact, you know, programming language that you, your organization leverages, or they don't know your jargon, or they don't have this exact experience that one out of 20,000 people may have. But then, but they exist, they exist. The problem is that your network does not include these folks and or you don't possess the skills to go out and interact and have conversations with these folks that would encourage them to even consider your workplace. That is the problem. It's not the pipeline, people exist. And quite frankly, a lot of times, you know, after after I explain that, that part to people, then they go into the, oh, well, but the experience, like I said, the experience, they don't have the exact experience. Okay, well, a lot of people in your workplace didn't have the quote unquote exact experience. Some people don't even have degrees. And yet you took the time and the money and the energy and you invested in them to ensure that they would have those skills so that they can stay in your 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 organization. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about inequity. And if you don't get it, well... I'm accepting new clients. So my fifth and final point, and arguably the most important, is that we cannot expect those with DEI titles to do all of the work. It is time for leaders of organizations to step it up. DEI is a top-down effort. I do not care to hear at this point, and I'm sure y'all hear the frustration in my voice, and this is why I'm dialing back on some of my DEI work. I no longer care to hear the whole, oh, we're a flat structure, and so we want to encourage our employees um, to drive DEI, and we really rely on our employee resource groups um, and our affinity groups to drive this these efforts. It's not their job. <laughs> it's not their job. It's not. You didn't hire them for that, number one. And number two, even, like I said just a few seconds ago, it is not the responsibility, the sole responsibility of those with DEI titles to do all of the DEI work and to make all the effort. It is a leader driven effort. It has to be driven by leaders. There's research on research on research that tells us that people listen to leaders first. There's no way around hierarchy right now. That is just how our society is structured. So the whole flat hierarchy is quite frankly BS, right? There's, there's levels. Hierarchy exists. There's no flat structure. Um, there's a chain of command. There are varied salaries, depending on your level of experience and tenure, there are titles. So let's stop pretending like there aren't, okay? And there is a significant difference between leadership buy-in and leadership engagement, right? When we're talking about buy-in, it's, you know, I have a leader that is um, signing off on this thing. They support our DEI efforts. They're a, a strong ally. Cool, 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 cool. That's not what I'm talking about. It's, and buy-in is also, of course, signing the check, right? And, and allotting budget. That's great. We need that. But I want to talk more about engagement. When I say engagement, I'm talking about leaders who are driving the change. I'm talking about leaders who are holding others within the organization and themselves accountable for this work. I'm talking about leaders who are regularly and consistently checking their biases as well as those around them within their organization, learning and unlearning behaviors. I'm talking about leaders who are consistently 
exposing themselves to different cultures and backgrounds. I'm talking about people, leaders who are doing things outside of their comfort zones and admitting in some cases that they don't have the answers and that they don't know. I'm talking about leaders who are sitting in on DEI meetings and not just sitting there answering emails on the side, but actively engaging in the conversation. I'm talking about leaders who are advocating for people when they are not in the room and speaking up when they see something that is not right. I'm also talking about leaders who are actively having one-on-one -on -one conversations and small group discussions with people and not waiting on their CDO or uh, DEI program manager, or ERG leaders to come report back to them. Go talk to your people. Go talk to your people. Your people are supporting and driving your organization. Go talk to them. So that number five point that I just went on a tangent about is critical. If organizations can start doing that in 2023, focusing on leaders, I guarantee you we'll see a lot more change. Guaranteed, guaranteed. Like it is more effective to send your, let's say 50 people managers through an inclusive leadership training than it is to send your entire organization through some automated unconscious bias training from 1985 that was designed in MS-DOS. And it's more cost effective. So what are we doing here? What are we doing here? So yes, thank you for listening to me rant. Um, I hope that if you tuned into this, you found it helpful. These are things that I have conversations on pretty much a daily basis around. And these are not just my thoughts and anecdotes. I have conversations with other DEI professionals and practitioners regularly. I have frequent conversations with leaders within organizations, a variety of organizations. You can check out my website if you're interested in knowing more about the type of work I do and the types of organizations I work with. Um, and I most importantly have conversations with people that are working within these organizations, individual contributors, um, folks who are driving DEI efforts that quite frankly shouldn't be because it's not their job, it shouldn't be their responsibility. They're most, most of them aren't getting paid for it, but they're still doing it because they care and they want to see change happen. But these are things that they're sharing with me that are problematic. Um, and so I just hope that in this year, I just hope that this year a change is going to come. <laughs> oh, I'm on one today. Uh, I'm just, I'm frustrated y'all. Like for real, this is, this is, this is why I said this year I'm dialing back in 2023 because sometimes I just feel like an absolute broken record and it doesn't matter in a lot of instances how many times you say the same things. It doesn't matter what data you bring to the table or, um, you know, you can even, you can literally take pull quotes from focus groups where you've sat down and had conversations with these individuals who are just tired these people who are just tired of the crap it doesn't matter though some people just don't care don't want to care some people quite frankly just as we see all the time on social media um don't aren't here for it they don't support diversity they don't support equity they don't support inclusion um, and for those folks, I don't waste my time trying to get them to understand at this point. I do my best to work with people who are on board and who are like, okay, I recognize something needs to be done. I'm just not entirely sure what, but let's do it. So yeah, to those of you working in the DEI space, keep hope alive. <laughs> um, especially those of you that are really, really doing the work, not only the work work but the work on yourselves keep at it it's not easy it can be tough make sure you're finding balance and time and space and peace for yourself because um as i talked about in my last video where i provided an update on my sort of dei entrepreneurial journey last year was just a roller coaster for me and i really really considered 
throwing the towel in and being done with DEI. I was, I was tapped out. Um, and I think this video will give you a lot more insight as to some of my frustrations just with the space in itself. Of course, there were other issues that I talked about in that video, but in terms of the actual DEI work and in, in industry, if you can call it that, um, it, it's just a lot. So I'm still at it. I'm still going to be standing on my soapbox and talking my, my, my stuff like I'm doing now. And I appreciate y'all supporting me. Um, please subscribe to my channel for more, um, share this information with anyone that you think it'll be relevant to or for, um, check out my site. If you're interested in working with me, I always welcome new collaborations. Um, this year I am really going to be focusing more on supporting other DEI practitioners in terms of facilitation, navigating tough conversations, designing effective um, learnings and workshops and that sort of thing. So if you are looking for support there, you can also reach out to me or if you just want to like network, I love networking with folks. I love people. That's why I love this work so much. I love people. So I love getting to know folks. Um, and as long as I have the time, I will, you know, I will, I'll send you a calendar invite. We could chop it up. So until later, y'all.